Good morning, everybody. So happy to be joined with you today to worship God together. Thank you for joining, and I hope you have a fabulous time worshiping with me. I hope you all had a great week. And before I start, let me uh, say happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays in August. So happy birthday to Claire Cho in second grade. Happy birthday to Caleb in fifth grade. And last but not least, happy birthday to teacher Amy. I hope you guys have a fabulous birthday celebration this month. Uh, I have a lot of announcements. Um, well, not a lot. I have some announcements to share with you um, after our uh, message. So let's get started. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us this morning, to calling us all together to worship you together. Father, please bless us, bless our homes, um, and be with us, uh, each and one of us in our hearts, in each of our homes, that we may listen and be attentive and be blessed by your message today. Father, please help us to uh, really take in your message today and to live by it throughout the weeks and months. Thank you, Father, for your love and your guidance and for your Holy Spirit that is uh, leading us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys. So last Sunday, we learned about Joseph and his brothers, how Jacob uh, favored Joseph of all the sons, and he made him a special colorful coat. And by the way, thank you for sending in your colorful drawings of Joseph's coat this week. That was really nice. Some of you guys are, no, actually I should say all of you guys are uh, great at creating your own version of Joseph's coat. That was really nice. Um, anyway, so Jacob made a, a colorful coat for J, uh, Joseph. And his brothers were jealous of how he got the coat and how he was Jacob's favorite son. And just to make the story short, they um, wanted to kill him. But instead of doing that, they sold him to a merchant on his way to Egypt. So our story goes on today with Joseph uh, finally being in Egypt and... Um, and he is blessed by God. People all around him can see how God was with Joseph. And he was uh, living a very good, honest life, right? And a lot of people saw that. And he, he had favor in many people. And uh, finally, uh, you know, Pharaoh... He uh, had a dream, and he was very uh, bothered by it because he couldn't make, make of it. He didn't know what it meant. And Joseph was able to explain the dream to, to him. And after that, Pharaoh uh, really admired Joseph. And guess what he did? He put Joseph uh, in control of many, many things. And in fact, he was second in command after uh, Pharaoh. So Joseph had a very, very important job, and he was in a very high rank. Can you believe that? One day, he was hated by his brothers, and he was sold um, to Egypt, and now he's in second command. Wow. And so God was with Joseph all this time. And because of Joseph's honest life, he was able to find favor in many people. And finally, Pharaoh's uh, favor. And Pharaoh put him uh, in a high rank to take care of very, very important task in Egypt. Well, uh, all around, uh, people were facing famine. You know, famine is when 
there is no supply of food at all and people are running out of things to eat and they are hungry and and they and everybody were facing seven years of famine but you know Joseph because he was high in rank and second in command he was given a job to take care of Egypt and he has so much food in store uh, for the people of Egypt and for whoever that came to buy food. Well, guess what? Joseph's brothers and his father Jacob, they were running out of food too. And so one day, the brothers make a trip to Egypt to buy some food. And when they meet Joseph, do they know that it's actually Joseph? No, they don't. But Joseph recognizes his brothers. Now picture this. Picture yourself as Joseph. After all these years, and still remembering what your brothers did to you, and now you're in a, a different country, and you're in second, second in command, in a very high rank, and you see your brothers coming to you to buy some food. What would you do? Would you still be angry and say, no, I will not sell food to you. Go back to your country or your, your place. Or would you forgive them and try to help them so that they don't starve? What would you do? Well, Joseph decides to forgive them. He, he lets the brothers know who he is. And the brothers are shocked. And they apologize. Joseph, please don't harm us. Please forgive us. We did you so wrong. We are not worthy. And Joseph said, don't worry, brothers. I know what you did was wrong, but because of what you did, God put me in this place, in this high position. It was probably God's plan for things to happen the way they did for me to be where I am today. And that's exactly what he told his brothers. He said, don't be sorry. It's okay. I forgive you. This is all part of God's plans. Wow! Isn't this such an amazing story? You know, boys and girls, when somebody does wrong things to you, it's very hard sometimes to forgive them. You know, I don't know how many times you had to forgive people. I don't know how many times people did wrong things to you. But you know, uh, many, many years ago, I would say about more than 10 years ago, um, my friend was having a very, very hard time. And uh, the couple, my friend and her husband, they were having a financial difficulty and they needed a lot of help. And teacher Wong Q and I, decided to uh, lend them some money. And it wasn't just, a, you know, $10 or $100, not even $1,000. It was a lot of money. And it wasn't because we were rich. It wasn't because we had a lot of extra money. But because our friend was in need, they needed help. And so we lend them some money, a big sum of money. Well, guess what? They didn't pay us back, and they moved away. And, you know, in fact, their situation didn't get better. They got, it got worse, and that's why they had to move away, because things were not going well for them. Well, you know, I felt betrayed because they did me wrong. 
you know, it wasn't just a few dollars that I lent. It was a lot of money. And they, they didn't pay us back. And I felt angry. How can you? And we were good friends, right? And we cared for them. We care about them. And that's why we did this, um, you know, decided on this big decision to help them out. And they, first of all, they were not able to pay us back because their situation was getting worse. But the fact that they didn't even offer to pay us back and just moving away, it really hurt my feelings. And it made me so angry and mad. And I was mad at them for a few years. And it made my heart, uh, you know, so evil. You know, always having that hate towards them in my heart for, for many years. And so I prayed to God, God, Please help me. Please help me solve this in my heart so that I don't hate them anymore. You know, because, you know, by this point, they will never pay us back. And I just have to accept that. Because me being angry and hating them for many years is not going to do me any good. It's not making the situation any better. Right? And so I have to pray a lot and they got to help me resolve this in my heart so that I don't hate because hating them in my heart uh, made me think of evil thoughts just like um, Joseph's brothers and I didn't want that to happen. I wanted this to stop and I wanted to just move on with my life and I said please God help me to forgive them and because they couldn't pay me back God, you pay me back for them. You bless me with that money that they couldn't pay me back. And you know, from then on until now, God really has blessed me. He has blessed our family abundantly. Even without that money being paid back by them, we still have plenty to live on. God has blessed us with good life. We have a home. We have a lot of food in the fridge. We have, you know, cars to drive with. We have a few leftover money to uh, buy things that we want sometimes. Most importantly, we have enough money to tithe to God every month. That's what's important. And we are not lacking in anything. And so I know that God did help me forgive them and God did bless us and he did pay us back the money that they couldn't pay us back. And so you really have to um, decide in your heart whether you're going to forgive them or not because even if you don't, nothing's going to change. It'll just make your heart bitter, right? And so in order to enjoy your life and in order to enjoy God's blessings, you have to decide to forgive them. And you know, I have a slice of lemon here. Do you see this? Because I'm going to show you how many of you guys had this lemon before. You know, when my kids were babies, I would put this in their mouth and take a video of them because they made the most funny facial expressions. But this is not for that purpose today. I'm going to show you by eating this lemon how it makes me feel. Ready? Oh! Ooh! That is so sour, and I do not enjoy that. You know, I don't know. Some people do enjoy eating lemon, but that is too sour and just too powerful for me. And you know, eating lemon will never, ever make me smile. 
in fact, my facial expression will always be frowned, you know, like this, like that, you know? And that's how your heart is when you refuse to forgive people. Your heart will always be frowning, and it will never make you smile when you think of those people that you can't forgive. And you know what they say? When life gives you lemon, what do you do? Make lemonade. Because this is the way you forgive people. You turn something bad into good. And so I squeezed some lemon juice in here. I added a lot of water. And I added a lot of sugar. That's how it tastes. Mmm, this is delicious. Wow, that sour, powerful lemon turned it, turned it into this delicious lemonade. Let me take another sip. Mmm, delicious. You know, the water and sugar that was added to the sour lemon juice is God and God's blessing. God and the Holy Spirit helping you to sugarcoat your heart so that your heart is no longer sour and bitter. And that makes you smile. Oh, it made me smile. That is one good lemonade. So when life gives you lemon, make lemonade. When, when somebody does you wrong, decide in your heart to forgive them. Sugarcoat your heart with God's blessings and just move on with your life. And that's exactly what happened to Joseph and his brothers. He knew in his heart that it was all in God's plan, that, that, he be, he, uh, that the fact that the brothers sold him to Egypt to go, to go there and to be in this high position so that he can save his family with food. Wow, what an amazing plan that God had for them. And guess what? God has amazing plans for you. And when you decide to forgive those people in your heart, God will bless you over and over again. And he will turn bad situ situation into good situation. And he will be with you. And you will continue to be in God's favor. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us about forgiveness this morning. Lord, when we look at Joseph and his life and how he was treated by his brothers, I cannot imagine how he can forgive them so quickly. But you sugar-coated Joseph's heart and you had Joseph believe strongly that everything was part of your plan and that you turned every bad situation into good uh, in order for uh, Joseph to provide food for his family. Father, thank you for this wonderful example for us to follow. Please help us to look into our hearts. If we haven't forgiven some people, please help us to forgive them today. Please help us to decide in our hearts. Please sugarcoat our hearts so that we can decide to forgive them and just uh, be ready to receive your blessings. Lord, thank you for always loving us and promising us of your great plans, uh, promises of uh, being with us and leading us in, uh, into a, a blessed life. I pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Okay, so your homework for this week is to draw a picture of when you had to forgive someone. Or if you haven't forgiven yet and you need to forgive, draw a picture about your forgiveness today. And I want you to write 
three to five sentences explaining about your picture. Okay? So I look forward to uh, seeing your drawings of your forgiveness. And uh, let me start the announcement that I promised you earlier. So today, you guys, is our last Sunday uh, being in your old grade, right? So because school is going to start very soon, you're going to start um, in your new grade, right? So next Sunday, we're going to start doing Sunday school online. So starting next Sunday and every Sunday, you're going to meet with your teacher at 9.45 a.m. to 10.30. So for 45 minutes every morning, you're going to join your teacher and your class, your new class, and do Sunday school together. So your teacher will, will um, contact you very soon and send you a link for you to join your teacher for Sunday school every Sunday at 9.45 starting next Sunday. And so um, first, um, I'm very sad, but let me take this time to say goodbye to our fifth graders who are moving up to sixth grade and moving up to youth group next Sunday. So um, Abigail, Aiden, Caleb, Chloe, Dave, Elijah, Jeannie, and Joshua. Thank you for being with us all these years, and thank you for being great in my class. And I'm very sad to let you go, and I'm very sad that we have to end it this way. But when we do meet each other again um, at church, we will do um, our traditional ceremony for you with your candy necklace and your Bible. Okay, but until then, you are going to be moving up to the youth group starting next Sunday, and you can join their service, and you can join their small groups. So I'm very happy that you're growing up, and you're going to have a great time in, in the youth group. Okay, and uh, I would like to welcome Yuna Tam, and that, that's Jean's sister, she is moving up to kindergarten. And unfortunately, she's the only uh, kindergartner that's moving up this year. And so um, we are combining kindergarten and first grade class together. So your new teachers and your new classes are kindergartners and first graders, the new kindergartners and the new first graders. You're going to be together, and your teacher will be Teacher Chu Yang. Okay, and the new first graders, your t oh, I'm sorry, and the new second graders, your teacher is going to be Teacher Amy. Yay! Teacher Amy is back. We're so happy to have her back. And the new third graders, your teacher will be Teacher Eric. And the new fourth graders, your teacher will be Teacher Wong Q. And finally, the new fifth graders, I'm going to be your teacher. Yay! I'm, I know that you guys are excited to be in your new class, to be with your new Sunday school teachers, and to be able to see each other again uh, in your Sunday school class starting next Sunday. It's going to be fabulous. And I'm also very, very sad to let two teachers go, and that is Teacher Hyunju and Teacher Catherine. Thank you uh, to those two teachers who served with us, who served you guys. They were fabulous. They were wonderful teachers. But they will be leaving us, and, um, and we are going to start new with new classes and new teachers. Okay? So I'm very excited to be able to start online Sunday school starting next Sunday, and I hope that you guys can all join because guess what? Every Sunday, well, so far right now, you are earning points by doing your Sunday homework, right? Your, your worship, the homework that I give you, right? And also, I've been taking attendance for, um, uh, for those of you that show up on Fridays. Right? So including all that and with the Sunday school starting next Sunday, 
you're going to be able to earn up to four points every Sunday. Okay, one point for coming to Sunday school, another point for doing your memory verse for your teacher, another point uh, by showing up on Fridays, and another point for doing your uh, homework that I give you every Sunday. So that's up to four points. So we are adding up all your points. And like I said, when we meet together again at church, I'm going to open a big store and you're going to be able to spend your points to buy prizes. That is exciting. I don't know about you, but that excites me. And I don't even have points. So I hope you guys are trying hard. Um, even though we are not physically at church, your body, your heart, your home is a church. Your family is a church. And so please join me in making this exciting, earning points, showing up, and doing homework. All right? All right, you guys. Have a great week, and I look forward to seeing your drawing and your little story that goes with your picture. All right? Oh, by the way, our story, I'm sorry, I, sometimes I forget saying this, but our story comes from Genesis chapter 45. Sorry for saying that late. But anyways, have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday or Friday first. Bye.